Pocatello with a gust of 49 miles per hour, almost 50 miles per hour. There are some thunderstorms to the north of there, uh, right around Idaho Falls and down towards Blackfoot. Here's a look at our temperature change over the last 24 hours. It's 18 degrees cooler than it was at this time yesterday in McCall. Seven degrees cooler in Boise than it was at this time yesterday throughout the northwest. Those temperatures much cooler. Look at those readings in Montana. It's 35 degrees cooler than it was this time yesterday in Missoula and Bozeman. In Montana, just a huge change from the weather that we had uh, just for the last couple of days. We'll stay below average temperature wise. 53 is our forecast high for tomorrow and Monday, and those morning lows are going to get way down. We'll get close to the freezing mark in many valley locations. 33 for the overnight low in Boise, 32 in Mountain Home. So, those of you wondering if it's time to plant a garden or not, well, this just goes to show you that we can get down to a around or lower than freezing. The record low for this day is in the 20s, so use your best judgment. Some clouds over McCall right now. We may see a snow shower there. Looks like a shower or two around Sun Valley right now as well. And we do have snow showers in those mountain locations in the forecast for this evening, but they should clear out by tomorrow. Uh, so we're looking at uh, temperatures that will be much cooler. We'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Steve. As the stay-at-home order continues, Boise Parks and Rec Department has closed several recreation amenities, even putting a fence around Rhodes Skate Park just yesterday. While Boise thrives on being an active community, Six on Your Side's Steve Dent shares a reminder on why people need to continue to practice social distancing protocols. For the most part, people in Boise have been doing a good job when it comes to enjoying the weather while at the same time maintaining social distancing protocols to slow the spread of COVID-19. I would say that we're, we're probably seeing 80 to 90 percent of the, of the users of our park and facilities and our green belt are really uh, adhering to that. Um, to that physical distancing. Mayor Lauren McLean has encouraged residents to exercise outdoors, but do it safely. And Boise Parks and Rec has launched an ambassador program. We're not out there to patrol. We're not out there to, um, you know, to uh, really enforce any rules. We're out there just to educate and provide that ambassador relationship. Boise Parks and Rec has closed several of their amenities from the Bike Skills Park to the Whitewater Park and Road Skate Park. We closed the skate park uh, actually two weeks ago and uh, we still continue to get a number of skaters in there every day. That forced the city to put a fence around roads. And Doug Holloway told me, while mountain bikers have done a good job cooperating with the closure at the bike park, the pump track has been a different story. We have had some issues with um, the public utilize, continuing to utilize the pump tracks um, even though the park is closed. So we'll, we'll continue to evaluate that. And I get it. I think we're all getting a little restless. And we have such incredible amenities here in the city of Boise. But I think it's also important to follow the rules and maintain that social distancing so we can continue to enjoy the amenities that are open, like the Greenbelt and the Ridge to Rivers trail system. We want our citizens to continue to enjoy all of our parks, continue to enjoy the Greenbelt and our trail system. But again, we just really ask that you continue to exercise that safe physical distancing. Steve Dent, six on your side. We have a link on our website, sixonyourside.com, to show you which amenities the Parks and Rec Department has open and which ones are closed because of the coronavirus. Still ahead on Six on Your Side, Yellowstone National Park keeps their gates closed with a major question mark on when they'll reopen. And temperatures much cooler than they were yesterday. They'll be even cooler tomorrow. I'll let you know when things will warm up coming up next. On your side forecast. And what a change 24 hours can make. Yesterday we had temperatures in the 70s around the Treasure Valley, parts of the lower Treasure Valley getting close to 80 degrees. That is all gone now. A cold front sweeping through southern Idaho, really changing things. Those winds howling this afternoon and our uh, high temperatures, some of them are from this morning. Our uh, high temperature for Boise, 64 degrees, and that happened this morning. 47 was the high temperature for McCall. They're sitting in the 30s right now at about 35 degrees. So that cold front came through and actually made some of the high temperatures for the day the temperatures that occurred in the morning and not in the afternoon, which is usually the case. Those overnight low temperatures tonight will be on the chilly side, 32 in Mountain 
at home, 33 in Boise, and generally low to middle 30s around the Treasure Valley. The farther up you go, the Snake River Valley, the cooler those temperatures will get. So places in the Magic Valley likely, get, likely getting down to or below freezing. And we have seen some showers, but mostly in southeastern Idaho, some pretty serious thunderstorms. Uh, between Blackfoot and Idaho Falls, so outflow winds, I think, responsible for that gust of 49 miles per hour in Pocatello. Those showers now dying down, but in the early frames of this loop, you can see all of those lightning strikes in eastern Idaho. Some very volatile weather right along that cold front. Those yellow spots you see are more aftershocks in the Stanley area from the earthquake that's been more than a week ago now, and just a few clouds over southwest Idaho. We do expect the possibility of some snow showers from McCall down towards Stanley this evening, then skies clearing out, but we could see a snow shower or two pop up in the east central mountains tomorrow afternoon and evening. Nothing serious there. It will be another breezy day, and here in the western part of the state, we'll see lots of sunshine, but temperatures much cooler, especially than they were the last couple of days, and they will be cooler tomorrow than today as well. Looking at afternoon highs in the low to middle 50s, some places getting close to 60 degrees like Ontario, but that's almost 20 degrees cooler than you were there yesterday. And it will be a breezy day with those northwest winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. West Central Mountains, those evening snow showers, then plenty of sunshine for tomorrow. Look at the low in McCall down to 21, a 37 year afternoon high there. East Central Mountains down to 16 in Stanley, maybe a snow shower or flurry in the afternoon. It's just a slight chance you'll see plenty of sunshine as well. Partly cloudy skies in the Magic Valley, winds out of the west at 15 to 20 miles per hour. A breezy day for sure. Afternoon highs, you only get them up to around 50 degrees. Uh, that should not say showers and thunderstorms for Boise. That's a misprint. We'll have plenty of sunshine and temperatures below average for the next couple of days. 29 for the low on Monday. So there you go. It gets below freezing. Our afternoon highs will warm as we get toward the end of the week, but a few clouds coming in by next weekend. A week from today, we're almost back to where we were yesterday with an afternoon high of 67 degrees. So a bit of a cool down for a few days after this windy day, but we'll warm right back up in just a few days. Boy, we have the wind. We have the aftershocks. Seems like we have a mix of everything coming up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Steve. The you superintendent bet. of Yellowstone National Park says it likely won't reopen until May or later, delaying the start of its traditional summer season for millions of tourists because of the coronavirus outbreak. Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Park have been closed since March 24th because of the virus. The parks closed wall mostly because they were inaccessible due to lingering snow. The virus has complicated the usual pattern of reopening gates, visitor centers, stores, restaurants, and lodges between April and early June. Yellowstone Superintendent Cam Shawley said he intends to listen to health officers and elected officials in deciding when to reopen. Still ahead on Six on Your Side, local teachers remind their students just how much they're missed with video messages. Six on Your Side at 5.30 continues now. As schools across the U.S. switch to online learning, trade schools, which offer students hands-on experience in various skills, are having a harder time offering a seamless experience for students. At Dennis Technical Charter Education, excuse me, at Dennis Technical Education Center, students studying the automotive, diesel, and construction trades are unable to practice their fine motor skills under the watchful eye of their teacher. Third-year students are also dealing with the loss of internships and apprenticeship opportunities. Ultimately, it came down to safety first. Um, we wanted our students to be safe, and so we pulled back our interns and apprentice students. Sunday night on Six on Your Side, Frankie Catafias shares more about the impact COVID-19 is having on the school and its students' graduation and certification trajectories. Teachers in the Minidoka School District are sending their students a message of love and positivity, all taking part in the Minidoka Minute. During the video, each teacher takes the time to say one thing they miss about their students, now that everyone is teaching and learning from home. The district says it's a way for teachers to continue connecting with their students in a virtual setting and to make the transition to online learning a little easier. They spend a lot of time together and to all of a sudden not be able to go and see them every day for hours. It's a, it's a big change for teachers and students and parents. 
some of the things the teachers missed most are the smiles and their students and answering the questions. The district says they'll be putting out a new Minidoka Minute every Friday on their Facebook page. If you'd like to check it out, we have a link on our website. Just head to sixonyourside.com. Idaho Makers for Equity, a STEM action center, is shifting their efforts to help healthcare workers, launching an initiative called Idaho Makers Unite. The initiative connects Idaho makers of personal protective equipment with healthcare workers and at risk people in need of PPE. The makers are using their own equipment to 3D print face shields, sew masks, and create other protective equipment to give to those in need. The initiative's main goal is to save lives. Since last week, 14 different facilities have requested equipment from the makers, and that number is only growing. But to be able to see hospice nurses that are receiving uh, 200 face shields so that they feel safe um, when they go in and interact with their patients in hospice care. I mean, those are the kind of stories that are just so phenomenal to me when we've, when we've made these really important connections. And at the end of the day, the, the goal is to save lives. STEM saves lives. Idaho Makers Unite is desperately looking for anyone able to help fulfill their large number of sewn mask requests. If you or anyone you know is wanting to help, go to our website, sixonyourside.com. In tonight's We're Open, Wise Quill connects kids with a way to exercise their minds during their time at home with writing. With schools switching to remote learning, owner Jamie Duke is expanding her business. Wise Quill is an online writing consulting company that helps writers break through any barriers or limitations they might have. They now offer daily writing prompts online for teachers and students. The prompts are meant to get kids thinking and using their imagination. Part of getting them motivated is finding things that they're interested